program and may God continue to bless you. Today I want to share on the topic obedient servant and uh, I want us to see on the meaning of the word obedience. Obedience is a written or spoken instructions from the superior and order to those under him and the meaning of the word servant is one who serves another providing help in some manner. And uh, this was well described in the book of Mark chapter number 9 and verse number 35. But Jesus said when he sat down and called the twelve and he said to them, if any man wants to be great, he shall be the least of all and servant of all. So servanthood is where we offer help. Uh, where it is required and because servants plays a significant role in society making things happen on daily basis it is by serving then there is creativity in the earth and the people normally are found doing something so when i speak about servant it's across the board from civil servant house help our political leaders and those who are who serves the Lord and in the world they hold the largest population in percentage making things happen on daily basis so if you go to many institutions we have got one master everybody else is on to service and service so our servants hold the greatest population and these are the people who makes things happen in the book of uh, 1 Samuel, chapter number 15, uh, is an example of, uh, of corrupt servant. So, if we corrupt servanthood, then everything uh, shall uh, fall down and everything shall fall apart. And in the book of 1 Samuel 15, and chapter, uh, chapter number 15, and verse number 24, the Bible says, And Saul, and, 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 and Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of, of the Lord and your word, because I feared the people and obeyed their voices. Uh, this was a leader who was anointed to serve the great nation of Israel uh, unto victory upon victory. But uh, he opted uh, to violate the instructions from the Lord. Uh, and to become selective in, in complete obedience. When you become selective uh, in obeying, it is called incomplete obedience and it always uh, brings a lot of uh, uh, things falling apart. So this has become the norm for many people around the world. Uh, the Bible says, and God rejected Saul as a king of the great nation of Israel because of one reason because of not serving the way he was called to serve. And this is what is killing many economies. This is what is bringing many nations uh, to its knee because of, uh, of corruption and this kind of thing. So God is calling us uh, to go back uh, to the true servanthood where we can be able to serve with all uh, diligence and uh, the Lord shall be blessed in all of it. Jesus humbled himself until he became a servant. Although he was the Lord and the King, he was the, the image of God, uh, he, he humbled himself until he served as a, as a servant, until he completed a mission in three years. And uh, for that reason, the Bible says he was given a name above any other, any other name in the world. So it is servanthood we shall bring you uh, to, the, to the top. And may God help us to understand this. In the Roman Empire, servants were considered as merry properties and would be misused as, as holy, uh, translating to becoming slave. 
but in the church of Jesus Christ, where the slave owners and their slaves broke bread together at the Lord's table as equals. So when we talk about uh, when we talk about servanthood, we are talking about the servanthood of, 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 of the universe. So uh, although Christianity may be different levels in the other society, we might be in different levels. Uh, we are all equal servants before God. He does not pray favorite. So when God talks about uh, the church and Christianity, it is becoming servants, all of us, because we have got just one master in heaven who is uh, giving us the orders and uh, looking for our diligent. Even if you may own many servants, remember, we all have one master in heaven. In the book of Ephesians chapter number 6 and verse number 5, the Bible says, Servants, be obedient to those who, according to the flesh, are your masters, with fear and trembling, in singleness of heart, as to Christ. No doubt, some slaves were spiritually gifted in society ladders than their masters. But the moment they entered the church, they became equal servants, even as they continued to serve. And verse number 6 says, uh, gives us, uh, Paul gives the guideline on how to give service in the church of Jesus Christ. So the Bible says, uh, in verse number 6, not in the way of service, only when eyes are on you as men pleaser, but as servant of Christ, doing the will of God from heart. So here, Paul is talking about when we offer any service at any level, uh, we are supposed to do it as if we are doing it to God. And once we do it, to, we are doing it to God. We shall do it with all diligence. Uh, and we are not going to become men praisers. Uh, we are only going to praise one God, and that is our Lord uh, Jesus Christ and Savior, doing the will of God from our heart. Servants and employees should serve faithfully even when no one is looking after them. God sees all we are doing secretly. In fact, Jesus said when you want to pray, you go in a closet and you pray uh, in the secret and he shall uh, reward you openly. So when we serve God, even in our, uh, in our closet, we serve him with all diligence. God is able to do us the best uh, and to give us the best reward because we are serving as we are serving in the Lord. In the body of Christ, the church, there is a higher master in heaven who is completely fair on the supervisory law. Therefore, we should carry our responsibility with a lot of diligence in the name of the Lord. In the, in the, in the, in the, in the book of Ephesians 6 and 7, the Bible continues to say these are uh, more instructions. Knowing whatever uh, good things each one does, he will receive some good again from the Lord whether he is bound or free. So uh, here, Paul is calling us uh, to understand that there is always a reward for any good thing we do unto God. So uh, can you serve God as if you are doing it on, for yourself? Unafanya kazi vizuri kama ni huo likuwa najifanya. There is this example, uh, a story which is given, I don't know whether it's true or it's just a story, where a fellow uh, a brother was uh, went to abroad and he was blessed and then he called upon his brother and he wanted to build a house and uh, uh, he could send money and he could uh, provide for all what it was required for that house but uh, when he sent that money to the brother who was uh, in Kenya uh, it is said that the brother uh, was buying substandard materials and he built a substandard house which was not strong at all. And at the end of building the house, the brother surprised him and told him, I was building that house for you. And uh, you see, uh, because he built a substandard house, he regretted so much of what he has done and he said, if only I knew uh, I could have built a better house. But he could find himself that he built a substandard house because he thought he was building it for his brother. So may God help us. Whenever we are doing anything, can we do it with all diligence as it is for it is ours so that we shall receive a blessing from the Lord. Verse number say, 8 says of the Versions, knowing, what, knowing that whatever good thing each one does, he shall receive the same again from the Lord. Uh, from the Lord. So the, the, the strong uh, motivation to serve someone well is found in the future reward that Christ gives to those who are faithful in service. So who can we compare 
with Joseph. Whatever Joseph did, he did it with all his diligence. If you follow the life of Joseph from Genesis chapter number 37 to chapter number 50, and you see Joseph promotion came through service. When he was given work by Patiphos, he did it with all his heart. And uh, one time when the wife wanted to uh, to pray sex with him, uh, the Bible says that he said uh, he's, he's not been allowed by the master. Everything else has been left uh, uh, for, for his check, but uh, the wife was uh, was beyond what was left on him. So Joseph did everything diligently. When he went to the prison, uh, he became diligent until uh, uh, Phil called uh, called him out of prison to promote him uh, to become the second in command. This is because of one thing, that uh, servanthood has got a reward. Anything you do uh, shall be rewarded by God. So we cannot maybe compare uh, anybody else with Joseph uh, who uh, did uh, the right things uh, because uh, the Bible says, who can, who, how, who, how, how, how can we compare uh, Joseph who went seduced to do the wrong things uh, hid his masters and refused to do what was right. And that is according to Genesis 39 and verse number 8, where the Bible says, But he refused uh, with me uh, in charge. He told her, My master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns uh, he has entrusted to my care, because all work done to his honor will bring an internal reward. So Joseph refused to do the wrong thing. For the wrong reasons and it is by that he was to be promoted to become the second greatest in command uh, in the land of in the land of Egypt so God is calling us in wherever place you are working as a civil servant whatever area you are working as a house help in that institution in that company God is calling us on to faithfulness and to become faithful servants that uh, we can have our rewards in the name of the Lord. Uh, so, uh, in the book of Genesis, chapter number 41 and verse number 38, the Bible says, Pharaoh said to his servant, Can we find such a one as this, a man in whom the Spirit of the Lord is? So, Pharaoh, when there was famine in the land, Pharaoh, the king, asked, can we find somebody like Joseph who had the spirit of the Lord upon him? Kweli kabisa unaweza tafutu kama wani mwene siyasa. Watu wanaweza kutafuta. Na waweza kusema, kweli kabisa, uyu ndi ule mtu tunataka. Can people come to you at your home to sort you and tell you it's you we need as our leader because of your faithfulness? God is looking on this kind of people. And Joseph was one of these persons. And we cannot compare our current generation with a man like, like this. And the Bible says the book of Genesis chapter number 41 and 41. Pharaoh said to Joseph, Behold, I have set you all over the land of Egypt because of your diligent. So God is looking for this kind of people in our generation. In the book of 1 Timothy, that is chapter number 5 and verse number 17, the Bible says, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and in the teaching. So God is calling for a double honor to those people who are entrusted with his word. We have been called to give this word with all diligence that people may experience the goodness of God. So the primary function of a servant is to do things in the right way. And from that, he receives a double honor. So whatever you do diligently, it shall never go to a regret because God shall visit. He visited Joseph because of his diligence. So if he did it, he's the same yesterday, today and forever. So one, 
that person who diligently handles his servanthood well, he receives respect for ruling well. Jesus ruled well until he received a name above every other name. For three years, Jesus demonstrated leadership in all means. And point number two, adequate adequacy pays for their diligence. So may, may we become adequate in what we are doing so that God shall be able uh, to bless us with that double honor in the name of the Lord. So the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ is marvelous even as we continue to serve. In the book of uh, Matthew chapter number 25 all the way through uh, from verse number 26 the Bible talks about uh, the three servants, the master who was going for a journey and he called upon his three servants and he gave them the talent we all remember that story from our Sunday school. One was given five talents, another one was given two, another one was given one. And the Bible says that uh, the one was given the five talents after the return. That is in the book of Matthew chapter number 25 and verse number 26. Well, the one who received the five, he was able to make profit for the master when he was away. And the one who was given two, he was also able to make uh, profit. But if you go in chapter, in verse number 26, the Bible says, but the, uh, there was a lazy servant who was given one. When the master called on him to come and bring uh, the talent and his profit, he said uh, this to the Lord. And he answered him, you uh, wicked and lazy servant, you know that I leap where I don't sow and gather where I did not scatter. You ought therefore to have deposited my money with a banker and at my coming I should have received back my own with interest. And for that reason, the Bible says in the book of in, 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 in verse number 29, for that reason, for to everyone who has will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who doesn't uh, have, uh, even that what he has will be taken away. So God is against laziness. And God is calling us to become diligent servants. And when we become diligent servants, God is ready to repay each one of us according to his work. So may God continue to graciously continue blessing us. You remember the story in the book of First Kings uh, of this uh, woman, uh, the window of the prophet. Uh, when he went to Elijah uh, uh, to inquire uh, of uh, help from him, he said one thing, your servant, uh, the prophet who died was a faithful person and now there are people who have come to, uh, to, to, to ask uh, for, they wanted to get back uh, a loan which he has taken and the Bible says that the woman spoke about his husband as a faithful servant and then the man of God Elisha asked him what do you have and she said I have a, a little bottle of, of oil and uh, she was required to go and uh, collect make a collection of many jars put them in the house and from that uh, little oil she was able uh, to fill all the jars around her so God is looking on to faithfulness Ukiwa wewe utakuwa mwaminifu katika kazi yako. Mungu hataweza kukuachilia kamwe kwa sababu Mungu lazima ataingilia kati. So and why is the reason that everybody is crying all over? It is because of the corruption which has brought nations down. Even our nation because there are people who have not been trusted in all the versions as servant. So God wants us to reflect back uh, to our servanthood that we can be able uh, to become faithful servant and do what is required of each one of us in the name of the Lord. So God is looking for this kind of a people. When Jesus wanted to demonstrate a servanthood, 
the Bible says he took a towel and when he took a towel and he took a bowel of water and then he knelt down and started washing the disciples feet so God is calling on a people to start washing one another's feet na sio kwenda kuosha miguu kabisa ati tunaenda kuosha miguu kwa mmoja na mwingine it is serving with diligent god is calling us to start once again when you are talking about revival it is about service god is not going to pour the potential in your life for any other reason he is pouring the potential because of the services you shall offer so may god help you to understand even as we are restored back to revival it is being restored back to service when the disciples of jesus the 120 were poured with the potential of the revival of the holy spirit in the book of acts it's called the book of action the bible says they went from one place they went to one house after another raising the dead performing miracle or to services kwa hivyo Mungu atupatie kipawa tukitumie sisi wenyewe nitikiweze kutumikia wengine kwa sababu hiyo ndio maana that's what we call revival so and god has got no any need with a lazy servant the lazy servant who had one talent the bible says he was vindicted ali alihukumiwa vibaya sana kwa sababu maandiko yanasema alinyaganywa na akaekwa kwa jela so we don't want things like this to happen to us may god help each one of us when you become a leader become a servant of all be like christ emulate christ who served with all diligence and within 3 years he was able to accomplish his vision his manifesto in the book of luke chapter Uh, chapter number 4 and verse number 18 and 19 where he said that the anointing of the lord was upon him to heal the broken heart that was the mission statement and the manifesto of our lord jesus christ which he accomplished within three years and he was able to pass the mantle to peter remember what peter said in the book of acts silver and gold i do not have but what i have i shall give you and he was able to raise a crib to stand and start doing what was necessary in life and i think from that day the life of that crib was transformed completely may god help us even as god we usher the revival of service in our lives in the name of the lord so verse number 30 says throughout the unprofitable servant in the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of the teeth so what was the result of Saul was worse than what he did and he died miserably you remember Saul died miserably he fell on his sword because he was he was rejected as a king of the great nation so god can reject you if you are not going to become a faithful servant in this end time restoration and revival god is looking for a people that shall partner and work with him for the restoration of the whole world we are the light of the world we are the salt that's what the bible says and god is calling upon us that we shall bring flavor to the world once again in our businesses in our workplaces in our homes families have crumbled apart but god is looking for faithful servants who shall become responsible faithful parents faithful fathers and faithful mothers faithful children in the name of the lord may the blessings of the lord continue to usher in your life even as you become an obedient servant to follow the instructions 
when we talk about the children, the book of Ephesians is very plain and clear that children obey your parents because this is the only command with a promise. So may we heed to the voice of God in these last days. And may God bless you even as you continue to watch, even as you continue uh, to view our program, Nenon Absara, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I would like to pray with you. Everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, this day I come to you with all honesty and all trustworthy that God, you are going to bring a transformation agenda. You are going to bring a paradigm shift in the lives of our people. Yes, Lord, how I thank you. Lord, even as you usher the end time revival, that your greatness shall be manifested in the name of the Lord. Everlasting Father, even as you minister to those people with diverse needs, Lord, there are those who are sick, kunawala wagonjwa na magonjwa diabetes. Lord, I bring down every sickness and I speak in healing in the name of Jesus, everlasting King, even as you minister to your people at their point of need. Lord, there are those who need finances, there are those who need healing, there are those who need Jehovah King, a place of rest, everlasting God. How I thank you, even as you minister to your people in the name of Jesus. May the blessings of the Lord continue to usher us to greater heights in the name of Jesus in these last days. You are blessed even as you continue to listen to us in the name of Jesus. Maybe you are there and you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior. I would like today that you may make a decision and a choice. So can you repeat these words after me? Jesus Christ, the Son of the Most High God, today I come to you with all submission. Lord, I am praying that you may remove my name from the book of death and write it to the book of eternal life. Lord, I thank you. Even as I repent all my sins, the known and the unknown, the sins of commission and the sins of omission. Lord Jesus, I thank you for granting me mercy. Today I become a child of God. Thank you, even Lord, as you help me to move on. Yes, today you have become saved. It is by faith that we receive Christ and by confessing with our mouth. So you can go around to your neighborhood as you tell them that what Jesus has done to you and find a church where you can progress and grow in the knowledge of the word of God. You are blessed even as you continue viewing us in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shalom, shalom, and God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.